Uh, hello, I am Nizar Bayliss from the University of Calgary. Uh, I'm presenting uh, on the efficacy and safety of elranatumab, a B-cell maturation antigen, and CD3 bispecific antibody in patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma. Uh, I'll presenting this on behalf of my co-investigator on this uh, trial. So BCMA is a member of the TNF alpha receptor superfamily, and it's highly expressed on multiple myeloma cells and provide a survival signal to the proliferation and survival of, of myeloma cells. Elranatamab is a humanized heterodimeric bispecific antibody that targets BCMA on myeloma cells and CD3 on T cells. And by doing so, it creates an immunological synapse, allowing the activation of cytotoxic T cells. Magnetism MM1 was a phase one study that was designed to evaluate the safety, the PK, the pharmacodynamics, and the efficacy of elranatumab in patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma. The IV dosing of elranatumab was previously presented at the American Society of Hematology meeting this year. We here present an extended analysis of a new cohort exploring the sub-Q dosing of elranatumab. Shown in here on the left, on the right side, the dosing escalation schema and the key elliptic criteria. As you can see from this table, this was a population of heavily pretreated myeloma patients with a median age of, 60, of 63. Around 63% of the patients had stage two or three disease. A quarter of the patients had high risk myeloma. And importantly, again, this was a heavily pretreated population with a median of eight prior line of therapy. 100% of the patients were pre previously exposed to proteasome inhibitor, 100% previously exposed to immunomodulators, and 96% exposed to anti-CD38 therapy. Overall, 83% were had, or 86% had triple class refractory disease, and a quarter of these patients were previously exposed to BCMA therapy with CAR T cell or with a BCMA antidrug conjugate. As far as safety, the, the drug was very well tolerated. As you can see in this table, the majority of the adverse event were grade one or grade two, with the exception of lymphopenia, which is an on-target side effect from bispecific antibodies, neutropenia, and thrombocytopenia. Importantly, the cytokine release syndrome, or CRS, was seen roughly in around 70% of the patients, but overall was only grade one and grade two CRS. And also with ICANS or neurotoxicity was observed in 20% of the patient limited to grade one and grade two. With cytokine release syndrome, as I mentioned, the overall incidence was 73.3%. And it's important to note that all the events were grade one or grade two. The median time to onset was one day and the median duration was three days ranging from one to 10 days. It's important to note that on this trial, patient did not receive any pre-medication to mitigate CRS, nor they received a priming or step-up dosing, which would be explored in a future cohort. With regard to pharmacokinetics, a couple of key findings. The subcutaneous dosing allowed a sustained, a prolonged absorption with a Tmax lasting from three to seven days after a single dose. Importantly, neither body weight nor soluble BCMA nor the presence of anti-drug antibodies, which was seen in 10% of the patient, affected the pharmacokinetics of elranatumab. The recommended phase two dose based on this study was 1,000 microgram per kilogram, or a potentially fixed dose of 76 milligram, since the body weight did not affect the uh, pharmacokinetics of the, of the elranatumab. Cytokines, as expected, were upregulated post-exposure to this bispecific molecule, with upregulation of interleukin-6, TNF-alpha, interferon gamma, and interleukin-2 within 20, 8 to 24 hours of exposure. With regard to efficacy, this BCMA targeting bispecific molecule was highly effective. As you can see, at doses over 215 microgram per kilogram, the overall response rate was 70%, with 30% achieving complete remission or stringent complete remission. At the recommended phase two dose of 1,000 microgram per kilogram, the overall response rate was 83.3%. A dive into these responses in a little bit more details in the swimmer plot. 
Here, the responses are, are color-coded based on the depth of response, with light blue showing stringent complete remission, yellow showing complete remission, and dark blue showing very good partial remission. You can see most of the patients achieved a very good partial remission or better. These responses was, were durable, but now patient out to 10 to 12 months maintaining their remission. And I, I'll, I'll point out a couple of key elements. Please note that in patients with high-risk myeloma, like patients with 414 and 17P, deep responses were achieved, including complete remission and very good partial remission. MRD assessment was performed in three patients who achieved stringent complete remission, and all of them were MRD negative status. And lastly, it's important to note that in patients with prior BCMA exposure, three out of these four patients had achieved a very good partial remission or a stringent complete remission. And with regard to the duration of these responses, with the uh, current follow-up, the expected six-month event-free is, uh, is estimated to be around 92.3%. So in summary, adrenatumab has shown a very high efficacy in heavily pretreated myeloma population. Uh, the drug overall is quite safe with a cytokine release syndrome limited to grade one or grade two, and no uh, grade three or grade four toxicity that is was of concern. The recommended phase dose, again, 1,000 microgram per kilogram, and the efficacy is very promising with 70% overall response rate and 30% complete remission or stringent complete remission. At the recommended phase two dose, the overall response rate is 83%. So these results cle clearly warrant the further development of lenatumab and the relapse refractory multiple myeloma population. And I want to again thank my co-investigators and our patient for their important and valuable contribution uh, to this important trial. Thank you.